Hi, in this video, we'll be talking about number systems. So what is a number system? Well, a number system defines how we represent our numbers. It tells us which digits we're allowed to use and what each position or place in a number means. You'll see what I mean by this in a little, in a little bit. For example, let's take the decimal number system. So the decimal number system is the number system that we use in our everyday lives, and it has 10 digits, 0 through 9. Now you're probably already comfortable making numbers in the decimal number system. We have 10 fingers, 10 toes, it's very easy for us to think in terms of 10. But this is not the only number system. It turns out we can also represent numbers using only two digits. And that's the binary number system. So the binary number system has a base of two, only two digits, 0 and 1. And this is how computers represent numbers at the very base level, using only zeros and ones. And we'll see how this is possible in a minute. But first we need to recognize that all number systems work exactly the same. Decimal and binary, in the way that they represent numbers, work the exact same way. They just have a different number base. So to see what I mean by number base, let's look at the decimal number system. So the decimal number system has a base of 10. That means that we have 10 digits to work with. We can use 0 through 9. So let's try to represent some numbers using only these digits. Well, let's start at zero and count up. We can represent zero. We can do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But now we have to represent 10. How are we gonna get to 10? We don't have a symbol for that. We don't have a digit that we can use to represent 10. So what do we do? We push the nine over to the side, we put a one in front of it, and then we set everything after it to zero with the understanding that this new place to the left is worth 10 times as much as the previous. We now have the ones place and the tens place. Cool, so now we can represent 10, and we can keep counting upwards. What happens when we get to 99? Now we're out of digits again. How are we gonna represent 100? Well, just like last time, we'll put a one in front of it and set everything after it to zero with the understanding that this new place is actually worth 100. We now have the ones place, the tens place, and the hundreds place. If you think about it, we can do any number this way. We can have a set of digits between 0 and 9, and each place is going to represent a different value. We're going to have the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds place, thousands, and so on. And really, each place is worth 10 times more than the previous. From 1 to 10, we multiply by 10. To get to 100, we multiply it by 10. To get to 1,000, we multiply by 10. So in other words, this is 1, this is 10, this is 10 times 10, this is 10 times 10 times 10. If we think about this in terms of exponents, we see that this is actually 10 to the 0, 10 to the 1, 10 to the 2, 10 to the 3, and so on. All we have to do is start from 0 and count upwards on the exponents. So this is where we get the phrase base 10 from. The base of all of these exponents is 10. So to get the number from this string of digits, all we have to do is look at how many groups of each of these places we have. We have 6 groups of 1,000, 9 groups of 100, 3 groups of 10, and 2 groups of 1. We have 6,000, 900, a 30, and a 2. And we put that all together, we have 6,932. So that's how the decimal system is working. What about the binary number system? Now we only have two digits, 0 and 1. How are we going to represent all these numbers using only 0 and 1? Well, let's try counting up, just like last time. We can do 0, we can do 1. Now we have to do 2, and we don't have a symbol for that. So, just like in the decimal system, we'll scoot that one over, put a 1 in front, and set everything after it to zero with the understanding that this is actually worth twice as much as the previous. We now have the ones place and the twos place. So in binary, one zero doesn't mean 10. One zero means two. Let's keep counting. Go up one more, and now we have three. Now we have to get to four. Well, just like when we went from 99 to 100, we'll just put a one in front and set everything after it to zero with the understanding that this new place is worth twice as much as the previous. So this is the fours place. So 100 zero, zero now means 4. Just like in the decimal system, we see that we're multiplying by the base every single time to get to the new spot. 1 times 2 is 2, times 2 again to get 4. See that this is the 1's place, the 2's place, and the 2 times 2's place. Or 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, and 2 squared. Again, we have a base of 2. The base of all these exponents is 2. So let's see what this looks like with a bigger number. Now we have 100, 100, 1001. What number could that possibly represent? Well, all we have to do is lay out all of those digits and put the value of their place below them. So this is the ones place, double it to get two, double it to get four. Let's see if you can do the rest in your head. So from here we would get the eights place, the sixteens place, the thirty-twos place, 
64's place and the 128's place. We have 2 to the 0 all the way up to 2 to the 7. So to get the decimal value of this number, all we have to do is add up the value at each of these places. We have one group of 128, we have no groups of 64, 0 32's, 1 16, 0 8's, 0 4's, 0 2's, and a single 1. So really we see that to get the decimal value, we really only have to look at the digits that have a 1. All the zeros aren't going to contribute to the final result. So let's just look at the 1's. This number has 1, 2 to the 7, 1, 2 to the 4, and 1, 2 to the 0. We have 128 plus 16 plus 1. 128 from this, from this 1, 16 from this 1, and 1 from that 1. When we add all these together, we get 145. So we see that this binary number is actually equal to 145. Let's explore number systems in the editor.